Thank you for listening to the weekly messages of New Providence Primitive Baptist Church. To subscribe to our podcast, hear other messages, or learn more about us, please visit nppbc.com. Before we get started uh, tonight, I just want to take a minute and thank the Lord for the service this morning. Yeah. You know, I shared with uh, thank you, Brother Tommy and my wife the other day, uh, sometimes your past just catches up with you. Sometimes your past just gets in your way and holds you down and holds you back. You know, and I, again, I, I ain't going to go into the details of it, but I'm glad that this morning that the Lord was letting me get free from that. Thank you, Lord. He told me that there's things that took place, yeah, I, and I know that I was wrong in some of the things that I done. I know that back in my past before I got saved, I know where I was at and I didn't belong. But I'm glad that now that I know that he brought me from those things and put me where I'm at now. And I don't have to worry about those things anymore. Now oftentimes Satan throws those things up at me and tries his best to bring me down. But I tried my very best to leave that with God this morning and leave it there. But again, you pray for us this evening. Lord. Lord, give us this message probably two months ago, and I didn't know when in the world we was going to get to preach it or if we was ever going to get to. I thought it might have just been something for me. But it's been on my mind all morning, all day, and I just can't seem to shake it. So you pray for us here this Amen. evening. Amen. We'll be in chapter 10 of the book of Luke here this, this evening. We'll start reading there in verse 1. And it says, After these things the Lord appointed unto the other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city, and every place whether he himself would come. Therefore he said unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to stand this evening. Lord, we thank you for what you've done for us this day, dear Lord. Lord, just for watching over us, Lord, leading us and guiding us, directing us, dear Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you just take over for just a little bit, dear Lord. Lord, that you just hide us behind the cross, Lord, that you'll take over, Lord. Lord, that you'll get ourselves out of the way, dear Lord. Lord, it'll be about you here this evening, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you do for us, Lord. It's in your mighty name we ask these things. Amen. So I began thinking, I said, again, the Lord's given me this message a pretty good while ago, and I, I just can't shake it. I can't get it off my mind, especially today. You know, and uh, there in verse 2, it says, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send That's forth right. laborers into the harvest. Right. And I began thinking, I said, you know, we live in a church age today where there's churches on every single corner. There's people everywhere. There's probably more pro- Christian professed people in the world that there ever has been, but are they truly laborers? Are they just people that are going to church day in and day out? Because if you look at the laborers, and and I'm getting to thinking about what labor truly is, I'm getting to thinking about what we have to do to work for those things. And, and, I, and immediately, Brother brother Winnie come to my mind. Yeah. Somebody that's constantly working, that's constantly doing something for somebody else, trying his best to make somebody happy. And again, I'm not trying to put Winnie on a pedestal, but he is the one that come to my yes, mind. Lord. Because he's tried his Come very on. best to help and to do everything, not for his own good. He can care less if he receives a penny, receives a dime for anything that he does, but he's willing to go out and do that. Hey, we've got a church world that can yeah. care less about the community that we live. When we've got a church where they can, that is not concerned about the lost and dying world that we live in. We've got churches all over the county that's just about a paycheck. We've got churches all yeah, over our yeah, country yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. about a number coming yeah, to the house of congregation. Hey, but we need to pray that God yes, would send yes. forth the laborers yes, because, hey, there's people out there dying on, every single day and going to hell yes, because yes. we ain't laboring yes, hard yes. enough. We're concerned yes, about all yes, these yes. other things in the world. And the Lord, give me a couple yes, men that I want to look at here this evening. You know, he was, he, and first they give me uh, Elijah. Elijah was a man. He's, the Bible says of like passions, like me and you. He was the same kind of person that we was. But he prayed to God and he stopped the rain. He prayed to God and asked God to move on their behalf. There was uh, 450 prophets of Baal. And he said, hey, I'm fed up. I'm tired of hearing about this. Let's go. Let's put an end to this right now. And he wasn't one bit afraid to stand up at the end and say, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight this battle. I'm ready to go my way. I'm ready to do what the Lord would have me to do. And we went to look at that. We need to take notice of that. that hey, that we don't need to be concerned about what the world tells us that they're going to do to us. We don't need to be concerned about what they tell us that we, why we can't stand or why we can't tell the truth. Hey, we need to do exactly. 
laborers were few. And I believe the day that we live in, hey, they're getting fewer and fewer. And we've got a few men, and I am thankful for the men of God that God's put in my life. I'm thankful for the people God's put in my path that's encouraged me, that's led me, that's helped me, that's picked me up in the times where I was so struggled and so beat down. And he's to grab me right and he's useless. But I'm praying that God will use you. Hey, I can't do this on my own. Tommy can't do it. Bobby can't do it. Zach can't do it. Hey, they, none of us preachers can do this on our own. We can't stand without God's help. Amen. That's right. Amen. But we need your help. We need your help to tell the world that, hey, there's a better way to live. There's a better thing coming. Hey, and if you don't know about it, if you ain't saved, if you ain't ready to go, hell is your destiny. No matter what the world tells you, that you can't talk about that anymore. That you can't tell people that about your sin. Hey, the world says, hey, we ain't got no problem. We ain't got no problem with you coming to church. You go to church all you want to. You tell me all these things and you do all these things. Hey, but you start getting in my business, you start telling me what I need to do and what I don't need to do, that's when people start getting offended. Hey, I'm talking about we need laborers that are not offended. We need people that don't care what's going to come their way. And and you go back and you read about Elijah after that, after he... Had the big contest on that and He got afraid. He ran. And I know that there's going to be times in our life where Satan rears his head at us and says, Hey, you might as well just go sit down. You might as well just go hide out. But ain't it good to know that eventually God's going to get your attention? He said, Hey, you, you've, you've padded long enough. You've worried on these things long enough. Get up and do what I'm asking you to do. You know, and, I, and I thought about that here this morning or this evening. That, Hey, it's about time that I get out of myself, that I get out of my feelings, that I get out of my desires, that I get out of my wants. Because, hey, there's people. I've got family members. That if the night that the Lord stepped before, he would die, they would die, and they would go to hell. Because I'm not laboring hard enough. I'm not putting forth enough effort. I'm not putting forth enough time. My knees ain't bruised. My knees ain't scarred from wearing them out. I ain't bleeding. I ain't bloodied because I'm hanging, I'm hanging out on the ground, scraping my knees on an altar. I I'm not in a spot. I'm not in a point where I'm laboring enough for God. And I can't say anything about you this evening. Hey, I'm talking to myself. I need to be a better laborer than God. I need to do more for God. Hey, I need to let this worldly stuff pass by. It ain't going to benefit me not one little bit. Hey, there's things that I'm coming down the pipe that I'm concerned about that I don't know what's going to happen. Hey, but you know what? If I if I just stay out of the way of it and I let God have control of all that, He'll take care of us and everything that we do. That's right. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8 it said, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God and God told Noah to build an ark. Yes. Yep. See, that ark wasn't just something that popped up overnight. Uh-huh. It wasn't just some easy thing that God told Noah and said, Hey, I need you to do this for me. And the next morning it was done. Hey, that ain't what happened. No. Noah had to wait no. for 120 yeah. years to get that boat built. Amen. And the entire time he's building that boat, I believe he's telling the message, Hey, get on board. Amen. Get on board. Get ready because there's Amen. something coming. There's somebody coming. There's something going to come and it's going to destroy this world. You better be ready. You better get on board. Yeah. See, he had to labor yep. in that. Yep. Yeah. Amen. He wasn't just as simple as walking outside and, 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 and everything was set up for you. He didn't, probably didn't have the direct. We get stuff out of the store now and there's directions that tells you exactly how to build it. He had to listen to God 100% for His direction, His dimensions, His the way that He told Him to build it. And that was the only way that it would make it. If He slipped up one, if He left one little screw or one little bolt out, you know, sometimes those packages come with extras. And you think, well, where's that go? I don't know where that goes in the, pro- in the process of what I just built. It's just left no. over. Hey, it seems all right. But if God, if Noah hadn't have built the ark yeah. exactly like God had told him, it would have never made it. Amen. The flood, if he'd have left one part of it out, it would have never made it. There would have been no hope for mankind. There, was, there would have been no hope for salvation because hey, it wouldn't have never made it because no. Noah didn't, wouldn't have obeyed God. But he did. He labored day in and I believe every day. He tried his best to do exactly what God would have him to do. To do it the way that God would have him to do it. Amen. Amen. That was a labor that he had to partake in. That's right. Hey, just like this walk of life that we live in. Hey, there's things that I'm praying for. Boy, I listened to a message the other night about him sitting down, about Jesus sitting down, and then you hear it on this side, and every now and then you'll hear that chair move. 
That means he's getting up and getting ready to do something. But there's times in my life where he sits still and I'm thinking, God, I've been praying for years. I've been praying for months. I've been praying and asking you to do these things. Where are you at? Yes. Maybe I'm not laboring the way that I ought to. Maybe I've got to put in a little more time. Maybe I've got to put in a little more effort. Maybe I've got to get a little more sincere. Maybe I've got to get a little more heartbroken. Maybe I need to get a little bit more burden about the people that I'm praying for. Amen. Because I know that He hears me. I know that He's going to answer those prayers. But oftentimes it seems like, hey, it, it, I've been praying it and praying it and praying it. But it just ain't happening. Just keep wavering in it. Just keep wavering in it. How you can hear, Brother Bill testifies often about how he prayed for his wife for 15 years before she ever got saved. 15 years. You think of that. How much of a, how much of a struggle that must have been for the flesh day in and day out. Of how, you know, he, and he, he'll tell you. There's times she'd jump up on the couch and say, you ain't going to church. You ain't doing this. You ain't doing that. Think of the struggle that that would have been. But he labored through that. He prayed for her. He did everything that he knew to do. He kept on trusting God. Kept on asking God to save her. And when you know 15 years later, she told him, if you'll wait for me, I'll go to church with you. Hey, that's what we're talking about here tonight. Hey, it's not going to be easy. I'm not asking for easy, God. I'm not asking you to make it just simple for me. Hey, I want to labor for God. I want to be like one of these men. I want to do exactly what God's bidding us to do. Not for my glory, not for my sake, but for His and His alone. Because I know, again, I told you about that this past week, where, where I've been in my mind, in my head, and I've got those things, those things that just wrap me up. But I also got to thinking about those things. Hey, there's still people in that same condition that I was in all those years ago. There's still people bound by those same things that I was bound by. Hey, God delivered me out of those things. But hey, I, maybe I need to go out. Maybe I need to do a little bit more. Maybe I need to testify. Maybe I need to preach. Maybe I need to witness a little bit more to these people that's still bound up that's in these right. things. Yep. Come on. Hey, I've not seen some of those people in years and years and years. Don't even know how to get a hold of them. But you know what? If God sees fit, He'll make a way. He'll put them in my path. He'll put them exactly where they need to be. But I have to be willing to do the labor part of it. Amen. I have to be willing when He says go, to go. I have to be willing to when He says stand, to stand. I have to be willing to when He says sit down and shut your mouth, to sit down and shut my mouth and not open it. Amen. Hey, that's the biggest problem that we have today is just yep. doing something on ourselves. Yep. Hey, oftentimes we think, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for God. I'm going to make sure that, that God looks good and then the whole time God ain't in it. Right. Yeah. If God ain't in it, there ain't no point in standing up here. If God's not telling us to do these things. Hey, we might as well just sit down because there ain't no point in it. It ain't going to work. But I believe that my God wants to see people say, yeah. I believe that He wants that harvest to take place. But I believe that there's people that He's concerned about. And I know that He's concerned about right. people, even in my family. Right. There's people just, and I can't speak, and I believe sitting here tonight, there's probably somebody in your life, in your family, a friend that you know that ain't right with God, yeah. that ain't ever been saved. Amen. If we care for them like we say we do, hey, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking to myself here. If I care for them like I say I do, why am I wearing the altar out? Why am I calling their name every opportunity that I get? Why am I, why, why am I waking up in the middle of the night and bowing on my face and saying, God, please save them. Please bring them back. Please, God, please work in their life. See, I need to labor a little bit more. I need to work a little bit harder to do those things. Again, and that's not for me. God could do all this right now in a twinkle of an eye. The snap of my fingers. He could grant every prayer, every desire of our hearts in here tonight. He could make those things happen. Yeah. But how, how often will we take that for granted? If every time that we just prayed, God answered right then. We'd get to the point where we didn't need God. We didn't need Him to move on behalf of us. Hey, we know He's going to be there. Don't get me wrong. I know He's going to be there. I know He hears these prayers. But sometimes we have to put forth the effort. Amen. Amen. Acts 
13 and 21, it says, And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Seth, a man, the tribe of Benjamin, a space of 40 years. And we had, when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom he also gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fill all my will. See, again, that was mentioned this morning. There was a labor that had to take place there. And I don't know about you all, but David, don't get me wrong. Jesus is what, when I get to heaven, I long to see Jesus. I long to bow his feet. And I long to stay there for as long as he's going to let me. But whenever I get up, I intend on talking to David for a little while. Because I can relate to that man. The, the mountaintops, you get up here and you think there ain't nothing that can bring me down. There ain't nothing that's going to that's gonna bother me. But you can go a couple of chapters later and you can read him where he's in the lowest pit and he's in the lowest valley and he's saying, Lord, where are you at? Have you forsaken me, Lord? I need your help. But he labored for God. Amen. He killed giants. He killed on. Hey, he was willing to do whatever God asked him to do, even the big hard things. When yeah. God, when the when the Goliath stood up, when we mentioned it this morning, I said, "Hey, forty days." That giant raised his head every day, and I believe every day that passed by, he got a little bolder. He got a little more cocky. He got a little more up, more of himself. He said, "Hey, there ain't nobody willing to stand against me. There ain't nobody willing to come against me. It's been thirty nine days, and there ain't nobody stood forty yet. Hey, ain't everybody scared of me?" That's just what Satan wants us to think. He wants us to think that we're scared of him and that we're, he's too big and too mighty and too powerful for us. But there was a little ruddy lad that said, Hey, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the living God? He said, Hey, there ain't nobody, and I'm paraphrasing, there ain't nobody else going to go. I'll go. I'll go do God's work. I'll go do God's business. And we read it. The giant laughed at him when he stepped out and said, Who are you? What are you going to do? You ain't going to do nothing. He said, All right, you're right. I ain't going to do nothing. But I come to you in the name of, the, of God. Amen. Amen. And he took that sling out, slung that rock, and hit that giant right in the head. And before he even knew it, he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That giant was dead because David's obedience. David not being scared to fight that battle. Not being scared to labor for God. See, he didn't know what he was getting into. His dad said, hey, I need you to go take your brother some food. Yep. They're, out in the, they're out in the war. Take him, take care of him. Yep. He walked out there and he heard that and that struck him wrong. Because I believe he knew who God was. Yeah. He knew where he brought him from. He knew what he had done for him. That he had protected him in the, in the face of the lion, in the face of the bear. And he said, well, I believe he can do it again with this time. That's right. He said, if ain't nobody else want to stand up, ain't nobody else want to take the fight, I believe that my God is able to deliver me into your, or deliver you into my hands today. And we read that story of what he did. There was labor involved in that. Not just saying it, not just being a hearer, but doing exactly what God would bid them to do. Jeremiah 1 and 4 says, The word of the Lord came unto the Lord, saying to me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto nations. I love the book of Jeremiah. I love getting in and I love him telling and standing and preaching the word of God and telling people where they're at in their life, telling people that they need to repent, that they need to get things right. You know, he was through in a dungeon. He, you know, he tried to quit. Right. Yep. I've tried to quit. Many times have I tried to quit. I've tried to sit down and say, Lord, I'm over it. I don't want to do it no more. It's too hard. The battle's too hard. There's too much criticism. There's too many people talking about you. So I sit down. Sometimes for a long time. A couple years at one point in time. I sit down. But then I found, just like Jeremiah, that there was a fire shut up in my bones. That I couldn't, even when I tried my best to control it, even when I tried my best to quench it, that I couldn't keep it quiet. That I had to let it, had to let it be known to who God was. Hey, and that's what we need as labor. What yeah. we need as a church. Hey, that's what the churches need all around the country, all around yeah. our communities. We need laborers that are not scared to tell people what God's telling us. That's right. Hey, and 
And again, you must do these things in love. I'm not telling you to go out here tonight right. and go find every family member that you have, every lost person in your life, and say, you're bound for hell, you this and that, you're doing this, you're doing that. You're all these. That's not what I'm telling you to do. I'm telling you to labor for them like God labored for us. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you to call their name out to an Almighty God that can hear your prayer. Right. And wants to hear your, hear your prayer. Wants to save the people. Wants to get those people to come back. Hey, He wants all those things. Again, He wants us to work. Yeah. Yeah. He wants us to do our part in doing those things. Again, there's been prayers that I've uttered up and I've got an answer. Seemed like instantly. Seemed like God moved right then when I needed Him to move. But there's also times that I'm in a spot now where I'm praying for something. And I ain't seen God do it yet. But I believe that God is going to do it. Because He tells me that if I live for Him, that if I do what He asks me to do, He tells me that He makes me those promises. But I just have to labor. Have to not get weary in what I'm doing. Right. When things get hard, when things get when I get overwhelmed like I was this morning, when I let those things creep back into my life, when I let those things creep into my mind, whether I acted on those actions or whether I didn't, when I entertained them long enough, it becomes sin. Yeah. And I had to get that moved. I had to get rid of those things yeah. to be able to do what God's asking us to do. Daniel 6 and 4 said, Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion or fault, for as much he was faithful, neither were there any errors or faults found in him. Hey, I want to be found faithful. I want to be like that. I want to be like Daniel when they say, Hey, you can't, but God can. I want to be like when they say, Hey, you can't pray no more. And his bottles are just good enough. He went in there and he opened the windows. Yeah. And said, hey, I don't care what Amen. you say. There's no song. I don't care what you say. I'm going to pray anyway. Amen. I want to get to that. Yeah. And, my, and again, I'm not trying to be selfish on myself, but I want to be right exactly where God would have me to yeah. be. I want God to use me in a way that he's never used me before. Amen. Again, not for my glory, not for my name's sake, but for his. Because people are going to see that and say, hey, do you see that boy? Hey, I remember when he was a drunk. I remember when he was an alcoholic, a drug addict, a whore monger. I remember when he was doing all those things. Yeah. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. But you know what I heard he was doing now? He was standing preaching the gospel of Jesus yeah. Christ. Right. That's what I want to be remembered for. Again, not for myself, but for him, the change Amen. that was made that day. Amen. Amen. But I have to work in those things. I have to labor yeah. and put forth the effort. Hey, the day that he saved me, I wasn't as strong as I am now. That's right. That's right. I, I look at, don't take me wrong, I look at that now as I'm weak. <laughs> and that I'm weak and that I fell miserably. But I can also look back almost nine years ago and see how weak that I was then. Right. And how much he's brought me step by Amen. step, day by day, little Amen. by little, and strengthened me a little bit, give me a little more boldness, give me a little more yeah. courage. And that's what I want. I want yeah. more of that. I want more of what God has to offer because I've found that I'm not content in the world anymore. I'm not content Amen. doing what I want to do. I'm only content when I'm out in God's business Amen. doing what God will bid us to do. Yeah. Amen. And oftentimes I don't labor enough. Even knowing those things. Even knowing that. There's often times where I'll come home and I'll sit down and I won't pick my Bible up. Because I had a hard day. Because I'm tired. Because it makes me sleepy sometimes. Because there's something on TV that I want to watch. Or there's somewhere I want to go. Or something I want to eat. Or some all these other things that oftentimes get in the way of my walk with God. Amen. Come on. Yeah. When those things start getting in the way, I've got a problem. Yeah. Hey, and it may be something as simple. You know, you know, I've sat right there on the pew before and got and the devil come to me and said, Hey, what are you having for lunch? <laughs> what are you having for lunch when you leave here? Your belly sure is hungry. What do you want to do for lunch? And if I entertain that long enough, I'm sitting there thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch. Yeah. 
But if I'll start praying, the moment that the, the devil creeps in and say, Lord, that ain't the time for this right now. That can wait until later on. You figure that out. You take care of that for me. And I've often found that. Often found times that Lord will get me right back in the midst of it. Yeah. He'll get me right back in service. Yeah. That's right. But again, there was a labor involved in that. There was a choice that I have to make whether I'm going to sit there and I'm going to entertain those things or whether I'm going to ask God to intercede on my behalf and help me. Yeah, right. Matthew 11, 11 says, Verily I say unto you, Among them born of women have raised, has not raised a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding that he is least in the kingdom of heaven, is greater than he. Man, that man was bold. <laughs> That man didn't care what he was going to say. Hey, he told him. He went right to him and said, Hey, you're living in sin. Yep. You can't do this. You can't do what you're doing here. Sin. Ultimately cost him his life. They threw him in jail because they got mad at him. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. You think the world out there wants to hear what you have to say? You think the drug addict, the whoremonger, the drunkard, the drug addict, well, do you think that they want to hear what you have to say? No, they don't want to hear it. But you know what? I found, because I was one of those. I was one of those that that didn't want to hear it. I was one of those that tried my very best not to come. But I found when God got real big, and started revealing himself to me and how lost that I truly was and where I was headed for and what I was in for. And hey, that I couldn't contain it no more. I couldn't sit there any longer. I couldn't have left that stand. I couldn't have left that day if I wanted to. Because he got real big and said, hey, it's either me or it's hell. That's it. You choose today. I'm asking you to choose. It's either me or hell today. Thank God I chose Him. Thank God He was merciful enough to give me that opportunity that morning when I tried my very dead level best to sit there because I didn't want to move because I wanted to hold on to what the world had to offer. I wanted to hold on to the things that I was doing so much because I thought that I enjoyed them. Hey, and I did enjoy them when I was out in the sin. I ain't going to tell you, I enjoyed what I did. But now... Again, I look back and those things just sickened me. But I look back now. What I'm doing now surpasses all those things. I don't have to wake up in the morning and worry about what I did or what I said or how I did it, how I got home. I don't have to worry about all that. Because I belong to God now. When I get excited... I don't wake up the next morning with a hangover. When the Lord, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me and I get to walk with Him and I get to talk with Him right exactly where I want, where He wants me to be, hey, I may be absolutely exhausted after that. But I ain't got to worry about it. He'll take care of all of that. Amen. Amen. And man, that tickles my soul. Yeah. Tickles me to death to know yeah. that God loves me the way that He does and that He wants yeah. to use me. Yeah. 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 I don't know about you, but hey, for Him to want to use somebody as lowly as I was and the shape that I was in and the things that I did, the people that I drove astray, the people that I brought down the wrong path, because yeah. I did. Hey, I drove them with me. I said, hey, you want to go? You want to go? Come on. No went to... to I put forth the I put forth every effort that I had to get them out in sin. I put forth every effort that I had to get them to come indulge with the sin that I was involved in. And you know, most of the time they come. But do you know God wants me now to put forth that same effort, to put forth that same passion that I was with when I that I was using yep. against them? Yep. Now yep. to compel them to come. Compel them. Yeah. They tried my best to get them into the house of God. Amen. Help us. I don't. I'm being honest with you. I don't. I don't put forth that effort. I don't put forth the time. I don't put forth the prayer. Hey, but I want to. And I say all that to say, hey, we need laborers. 
Hey, and I'm not just talking to the men. And I don't want to just use the men as an example. Again, Tommy mentioned it this morning. You look at Ruth and the things that she did, the not herself, that she helped a man. What a powerful woman that she was. You think of Mary, Jesus' mother. Hey, she had to listen. She had to listen to the Spirit and said, Hey, you're going to conceive a son. Yeah. Hey, there was a waiver involved in that for her. There was criticism that come her way for that. But yet she was willing to endure it. She was willing to put forth that labor, to put forth that time, so that the only begotten could be born. You look at those things. Hey, the women are just as important as the men. I'm not saying that you're not important. I'm not saying that it's... Hey, we're in this together, hand in hand. We need to be laboring for the God. Hey, women, you're going to reach people that I ain't going to be able to reach. You're going to be able to reach sisters that I that they can care less what the brother has to say, but you can reach them because you're the sister. So your walk, your obedience, your labor is just as important as ours. Amen. Don't mistake what I'm saying here tonight. I know I used a bunch of men as an example. But hey, your walk with God is just as important. That's your right. labor That's is right. just as important. Don't get slack yeah. and expect your husband to do it all. Don't get slack and expect everybody else to do it. Hey, you put forth the time. Right. You labor. You put forth the effort. Yep. Hey, and God's going to bless and God's going to move in your life. Yep. John 4 and 35 says, Say ye not there that their heart... Say ye... Sorry. Say not that there are yet four months, and then come with the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look at the field, on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto the eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Hey, it don't... I could care less if it's me. I could care less if it's you that prays the prayer that I've been asking for. Or the prayer that you may have been asking for. I could care less if it's my prayer that it, that utters up the, or if it's yours. Hey, let's labor in this, Bob. Amen. Together, we need to labor. Amen. That's right. And you know how we labor? Is we'll do exactly what God would have us to do. If we need to stand, then we need to stand. Yeah. Hey, preachers, if it's time for you to stand and preach the gospel, you stand and you preach it boldly. Yep, man. Yep. Singers, if you need to sing a song, sing it boldly. Amen. Church members, if you need to raise your little hand and praise God, you yep. raise it and you praise Him to the best of your ability. Amen. You labor the way that God's called you to labor. Yep. You do what God's bidding you to do and God will help you in those things. God will take that and He'll Amen. use that. Amen. But we have to labor. Amen. We have Amen. to put forth the work. I've always heard my whole life, anything worth doing is worth doing right. Anything worth having is worth working after. You can't just expect everybody to hand everything to you. Now don't get me wrong. God handed His, his Son. He did all the work. I didn't do nothing there. But the least that I can do now to help maybe somewhat repay Him is stand and preach His Word. Stand and teach His Word. Stand and tell somebody about who He is and what He's done. For no, if not for nobody else, but for myself. Tell them what He's done for me. Labor. Church labor. Hey, we're coming up into a time... Well, they don't. Nobody ain't concerned about coming to God's house. Right. Nobody's concerned about doing God's will anymore. <laughs> and I thank God that I'm part of a place that I believe there's a people that want to labor, that there's a people that want to put forth the effort, that there's a people that want to see things happen in this church and spill out to the community and spill out to. Our, I believe that I'm in a place where we want to see those things happen, and I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. But I can look at myself and I say, I can say, God, I know I can do more. Yeah. I know I can be better. Yeah. Lord, and that's going to take me to denying myself and accepting you, accepting the things that Amen. you're asking me to do. Amen. No matter what it is. Hey, we find that there's, you look back in the book of Acts, the disciples say, hey, we'll go out. Lord, we'll go out and we'll do it for you. 
It even cost some of them their life. I'm not telling you that it's going to be easy. I'm not telling you tonight that you're not going to face persecution, that you're not going to face chastisement, you're not going to face people mocking you. You're going to face all those things most likely. Now God can provide a way. God can make it to where those things never happen. But I believe that you will endure those things. I believe that we all will. And I believe that the time that we live in is getting closer and closer in the walk that we have now. That's why it's all the more important right now to labor all we have. Amen. To give God everything that we have. Every Amen. ounce of our... Bit. Hey, and again, I'm not telling you to go out and sell everything you own. I'm not telling you to go out and sell your house, sell your car, quit your job. That's not what I'm asking you to do. That's not what God's telling you to do. Right. He's telling you to go to the mission field. And you compel them to come. Amen. You do whatever you need to do to get them to come to God's house. You tell them about it. You show them what He's done for you. You explain to them about how good God is. About how much He loves them. And wants them to come. Yep. Hey, that may not... Hey, that's their own decision. God ain't going to force Himself upon anybody. That's right. But oftentimes I believe that if we can get them here, just like the Bible says, they got their friend to Jesus. And their friends made that man whole. We need to get them here and let God do the rest. Let God take the work. Let God get the increase and get us out of the way. But we need to be willing to work. Not part time. Not just halfway. Oftentimes we come into work or we go into work and and again you have people that expect you to do their job for them. Oftentimes people say, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. They don't want to do it yourself. I'm asking you tonight to do your part. Not to put it off on the pastor. Not to put it off on the deacon. Not to put it off on the song leader or the other church members. I'm asking you tonight, you do your part. If God's called you to preach, you preach. If God's called you to teach, you teach. If He's called you to sing, you sing. If He's called you to witness, witness. Whatever that it may be that you need to do for God, do it with all your heart. Live for God like I am. If I would live for God like I live for the world, God would move in my life and we would see things happen. Hey, begin. But I can't make you do it. And you can't make me do it. But I pray this evening, I'm coming to a close. If you want to come and get a song or whatever you want to do, Tom. Hey, let's labor. The world needs us to labor. They need to see that there's somebody concerned about them. They need to see that there's somebody that's concerned about their soul. There's somebody concerned about where they're spending eternity. They need to see that there's somebody concerned that they've turned their back on God and ain't living for Him anymore. They need to see those things. In order for us, to, in order for them to see that, that means that we must work. We must labor and put forth the effort and the time into all those things. Amen.